So, to illustrate, like this, this process of, of trying to understand, you know, what's the universe made of, uh, required an incredible amount of scientific, you know, energy and ingenuity, and lots of instruments. In fact, um, you know, we had to build huge, you know, the Large Hadron Collider, which is this massive object out in the out in Europe, to be able to understand, you know, what's what's underneath here, collide all of these things together, and work out the bits and that kind of thing. How do mathematicians? go through working out like the different kinds of, of objects that exist in our universe. And to help you understand that, I want you to look back at those four equations that I asked you to write down. Do you have them there? I asked you at the beginning of the lesson to solve those four equations. And um, I think they were these, right? So consider. Now, maybe when you looked at these, you thought, huh, these are a bit random, like, and, and also simple. I thought this was extension too, okay? But um, these are not just random. They're actually very specifically arranged because what they represent is a progression. They represent, in the same way that, uh, you know, going from earth, water, wind, fire, blah, 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 to this, to this, to strings, in the same way that we've progressed in our understanding of the material universe, the solutions to these equations represent our progress in understanding the mathematical universe. Now, I'm gonna introduce some language here for you to help you understand. Each of these has a solution, and each solution gets us further closer to the bottom of what really exists in the universe, right? So, let's begin with this one, okay? Now, the answer, the solution to this equation is three, okay? Now, three is what we call a natural number. Here's the symbol for it. It's an N with some um, funky extra lines in it. All Mathematics throughout um, human history, ge everywhere, geographically, always starts with the natural numbers. These are the numbers you count with. One, two, three, four, five, etc. Three is a natural number. But quite quickly, starting with the natural numbers and using just the simple operations, you get more than just the natural numbers, right? You discover that there's more going on. For instance, the solution to this equation is not a natural number. It's not a number you can count. The solution is negative two. This is what we call an integer. Now you're like, natural numbers, n for natural, what's this? Uh, it actually is a German word, it's the word Zahl, S-Z-A-H-L, and um, it means counting, similar to natural numbers. These are the integers, which include not just positive numbers, but negative numbers as well. Now that's weird, but using the tools of natural numbers, and just plus minus times divide, you discover that these things exist, just like scientists discovered these things exist. Now keep going, have a look at the next equation. The next equation has a solution that is not natural and it's not an integer either. Um, the answer of course is a half. And a half is what we call, the technical term, is a rational number. Now, again, confusingly, the symbol for rational numbers is not an R, it's a Q. Uh, and Q of course, in relation to, this is gonna be a fraction, right? The, the Q word that's related to fractions is quotient, right? It's a quotient. So the, the rational numbers, this is all of the, the um, fractions and the, the decimals that are either terminating or recurring. These are kind of like we're getting further. We understand there's more kinds of numbers that exist. Now then when you get to this guy, this equation is even more special because it doesn't just have one solution, it's got two. But both of the solutions break the patterns we've already set up. The solutions to this are plus and minus, positive and negative, root five, right? Well, root five is definitely not a natural number. It's not like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, root five, okay? Uh, it's certainly not an integer or rational. It's irrational, right? Now, to say something is not rational, we put a, um, a funky line, a curved line, over, over the Q, which indicates rational. So that means irrational. Now, these are all of the numbers, basically, um, that, like all the big families of numbers, with one exception, that you guys know about, okay? All of these are under one big umbrella, which we call the real numbers, right? The real numbers. Now, you can do a lot of maths with the real numbers. In fact, all of the maths you've done over the last 12 years has been working with these numbers, right? But, but, just like with these guys, there's kind of evidence to suggest that there's more going on, that there's something underneath here, there's something lower down, okay? So to illustrate that, um, I wanna draw your attention to not just these four equations, but I also asked you, I gave you two um, quadratic equations, 
and I asked you to find the sum and product of roots. Um, the sum and the product of roots, okay? Now, I think the first, uh, the first quadratic I gave you was x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And you should have found that for this quadratic, uh, the sum of roots is negative 5, and the product of roots was 6, okay? Now, this is unsurprising. This is unsurprising because x squared plus 5x plus 6 Pretty simple quadratic, right? You, you can factorize this very easily. It's x plus 2, x plus 3, which means that the solutions, the roots, the, the alpha and the beta, um, are going to be negative 2 and negative 3. Negative 2, negative 3. Well, well, that makes sense. You add negative 2 and negative 3, you'll get this. You multiply negative 2 and negative 3, you get this. Okay, so that's, that's fine. But I gave you another quadratic, right? I gave you another quadratic. I gave you this guy, x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0, okay? Now, just like before, you can work out, you can use minus b on a uh, here, and that gives you, excuse me, gives you negative 2. And then you use c on a to get a product, that gives you 4, okay? Now, the number crunching works just fine. But this is a bit weird. This is weird, right? Did you notice how weird it is? This you can factorize, x plus two, x plus three. Then you get the solutions out and um, you can add and multiply them, no big deal. But x squared plus two, x plus four doesn't want to be factorized, right? You can't think of an easy pair of numbers that's going to uh, add to this and multiply to that. You can do some factorizing, but not the kind of factorizing that'll give you roots, watch. Uh, I can rewrite this. I can complete the square on the first two terms like this. That's, that's a square, and since I've got four there and I've only written one here, I should add a three. So you can see this guy on the left, that can be factorized. That's the perfect square I was mentioning before. And so when you have a look at this, I, I mean, what does this thing look like? Um, X plus one all squared, that's the regular parabola moved to the left, one unit. And then plus three means you go up three units, okay? so. The vertex of this parabola is not at the origin. The vertex is here at negative 1, 3. And the parabola looks like that. This parabola doesn't have any roots, right? That's, that's weird because apparently you can add those roots and multiply them and get something reasonable out, right? So what is going on, okay? Uh, if these roots don't exist, how can, you, how can you add or multiply them, right? Well, I, my contention is that these roots do exist. Um, I'm going to try and show you what they are. But to do that, like this original set of four equations, we need to add some extra stuff onto here. We need to add an extra equation 